Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. My name is Mike Calta. I am here with Robert Kelly and Kay Adams filling in for Artie Lang. He'll be back tomorrow. The phone number is here, 888-936-8822. We are joined in the studio with the very funny Tom Cotter, who did, Tom, what I think might be one of the hardest things for a comedian to do in America yeah. is to get on there and show them how funny you are in that short span of time that they give a comedian to go out there and be funny. It was brutal. It was, seconds. right? But it's brutal for everybody. 90 seconds. When they yeah, do a but, song, they got to narrow it down to 90 seconds. But you can see if somebody can sing in 90 seconds. You In 90 seconds, if one of your jokes bombs, that could ruin your whole set. Yeah. Yeah, but you're, you were made for that show. I kept telling them, you, your style of comedy is very fast. Like, some guys take a long time to get to that, that punch. And then it's, it's big. You, are, you have, like, a, a, you've always been that way. Very fast. A lot of jokes uh, per seconds, you know, per per minute. You know what I mean? Your it, jokes really. It's very ADD, and yeah. yeah, it's perfect for that. And off the record, it's on the record now. I think uh, Wendy Liebman's on the show this year, and she's very fast, very quick, misdirection. Yeah, I think she'll do well. And and the funny thing is with you is that everybody that knows you tells me like he, he had to do all that clean material, and he's not your clean comedian all the time. I mean, you have to make it TV friendly. It depends on where you're performing. Right. Yeah. Well, not everybody could do that. Not a lot of comedians are either one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guilty as charged. Yeah. I'm a co 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 host because I'm too dirty. I got Shane shaking his head every time I say something. Don't do it. Don't do it, fatty. Uh, can I can I ask you also the pressure of uh, of having Howard Stern stare at that? I mean, a guy who has been uh, notorious over the years for having the greatest comedians of all time on his show and having memorable moments with them, and now you're performing to America and Howard. Yeah, I get lucky because because of him is that I, I credit him with how far I got in the competition because now you had Howie Mandel and Howard Stern, two comedian friendly people, and uh, Sharon Osbourne was the judge at the other time, and she's obviously she's married to the Prince of Darkness. Right. She's up for a good time. Right. But <laughs> before that, but in Howard's chair was Pierce Morgan, who as a child had a. Uh, his sense of humor surgically removed, hated <laughs> all American right. comics, couldn't stand them, and would just lambaste them on national television. He would say in a horrible British accent, you're not funny, I didn't laugh once, you're not original. Yeah. And there was no way I was going to let him make fun of me in front of 20 million people. So when he left and Howard took the seat, I thought that was my opening, and that's why I did it. How much interaction do you actually have with the judges when you're on the show backstage or when you guys aren't taping nothing? None. Zero. We had to really? clear the halls when they entered the building. Yeah. And when Nick Cannon walks in, he's got his whole entourage with him, and you know, you avert your eyes, it's yeah. that whole thing. And he's a great dude but that's the producers are about that they don't want any impropriety or any nepotism or and anything, you, your so. wife is a hilarious stand-up comic too i mean yes. you are one of the only successful stand-up comedy don't jinx us all right don't jinx you but you have two beautiful Rich kids. Voss, How many Rich kids? Voss. two kids right yeah three yeah. three three, the, three, three, three now. that we know of and, yeah. and then uh his wife is like was the prettiest comic in boston was what are you saying bob well, because you took her off the market saying? and okay. she left Boston. That's why. <laughs> she, and he, uh, you swooped in and t with your, you know, your in shape uh, gym teacher body. She used to date a lot of comics before me. Her really? nickname was Comic Relief. And now, <laughs> oh. uh, what? was that out loud? Sorry. Uh, did she write listening. any of your stuff? Uh, well, she'll throw me a line every once in a while. Is it good? Uh, like, how hard is that to tell your wife she's not funny? Well, <laughs> she's, at she my is. bachelor party, Greg Ro Rogel had the funniest line in the world. Uh, he said, you know, you're going to have that conversation one day with your wife when she she's going to say, am I funny? And it was, uh, she's very funny. She's just a different style. Bobby, you mentioned styles before. I keep calling you Bobby because I remember you the old days. I am Bobby. It's, it's Robert. To you, I'm Bobby. Okay, to you, it's it's Bobby. like the Nero thing. I know. He calls me Bobby. She calls me Robert. You call me Bobby. Don't call me Thomas. All right, so what? <laughs> uh, so when when Carrie does, you know, she takes her ten minutes to say hello, but yeah. she's very endearing and she's yeah. very. Everyone loves her on stage, yeah. but it, you know, she's a storyteller. Whereas my style is very different. So we're just you know, we're yin and yang. I remember we did we did shows with you, uh, me and Dane uh, in Rhode Island at a restaurant, and you you were headlining. We did we did Jesus. an improv group. That's the, the Alan the, Al Al the Monkeys. Alan yeah. the, Al the Monkeys. Were you in the Monkeys? Alan the Monkeys. No, he was, he was he the was headliner. We were Al <laughs> Del Benny was the leader. Of no, he Al wasn't the he leader. Wasn't? He I'm was, sorry. He was the front man. He okay. Was, we were the lead. The monkeys were the leaders. Uh, clearly. Oh, well, look where you all went. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, me, yeah, Dane's a millionaire. I'm here with you. And yeah. Al's in Australia with two kids. Yeah. Farming so, a field. And who was the fourth? Uh, there was fourth. Uh, there was the... Jay, Jay, uh, no, uh, Jay Hall, who uh, is, is in East Boston. Okay. But uh, he was headlining. And I remember you got heckled. And you just, you have your jokes, but then you just snapped on this guy. And you had like 20, it was written 
jokes, which I've never seen. Usually you deal with a heckler, it's just spontaneous. You, know, you look right. at your head, you just snapped on him, like boom, 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 just like your act, and he just shut the hell up. It was great. I don't give him any chance to get in there. That's yeah. the whole thing, you yeah. know. But uh, I've, I can't tell you how many times I've walked to my car by a bouncer in Rhode Island because some of those gigs were just horrible. <laughs> opening for, I'd open for a stripper at a uh, club in Rhode Island once, and because she, I was supposed like to open for act? her. I was supposed to open for her, and then she came up to me, and she's so hot, and she said, listen, I got another gig. Do you mind if going after me? Worst mistake in my life. <laughs> you said yes? Yes. You went See, the and comic ego is the worst thing in the world. incredible things, and I had to get up and try to tell jokes about my crotch in front of strangers, mm -hmm. and they had they wanted nothing to do with me, and they wanted to kill me after the show. How is that a combination? Like, uh, I hear so many horrible stories from comedians that I had to work a strip club. Mm. That seems to be the absolute worst. Let's stall you seeing a naked girl by a guy who's probably <laughs> marginally funny. That's like, uh, that's the worst spot for you to be in. I didn't worst. know that was the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there is. That's if I went thing. to a strip club and they said, hold on, before naked women come out, yeah. here's this middle-aged man with jokes, I would I would not stay in the strip club. It's Jay Leno comedian. started in Playboy clubs, you know. Yeah. At, the, at, at, at the time, there well, was... Back yeah. in the day, it was strip clubs. It was yeah. like jazz. It was, yeah. you did jazz clubs and strip clubs. Right. That's what comedy was. But the thing about you, though, is that you, um, you left New York, you had success, and you were on the road, and you were hustling it out. For a while, you're doing the like all of us Oof. on the road, hustling, like you know, doing the comedy clubs and, and and making the buck as a job. And then all of a sudden, you have this renaissance when you do this show, which is you know it doesn't happen to a lot of us, man. And you have this renaissance where you, in a perfect way, get to shine and 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 come become runner up. And now you're doing theaters, you're out of the clubs, you're traveling everywhere, you're making money. And I mean, this must be. Like, um, just like, wow. Oh, I, my God. I clearly stepped in unicorn poop. I know what happened. <laughs> I was very lucky because there's a million of there's We're a dime a dozen. You know, unfortunately, Robert, myself, right. there's a lot of us out there who've been at it for a while who are who can, you know, we can deliver. We've been at it for so long. Yeah. But they're so below the radar. There are guys yeah. out on cruise ships that are actually funny guys, but they're just off the radar. No one sees them. And that show, because it's unfair, it's up against reruns. It's on during the summer. The ratings are through the roost. Then you add Howard Stern, and then you've got that whole demographic. And so I got very, very lucky at a crucial time in my life because I was starting to get to think about sell selling encyclopedias. You, you, so you were at the point where you're like, I might get out of this. Oh, yeah. Really? Right. Not get I, I always thought I'd do it. I just didn't know if it would be what buttered my bread. I thought I might have to get a day job yeah. with, with benefits and, you know, and sell insurance or do something cheesy and then still do comedy as a, uh, a paying hobby kind of deal. Better to win or second place or did it not matter? All honesty, I had not I no... Uh, delusions that I would even be in the finals. I uh, everything above the quarterfinals was a blessing to me. And the dog act, I, I crap all over it. But they they really you know America loved them, and they were I, they were I, actually a decent acts. So. I was there at yeah. the finale. Yeah, I remember. And I'm watching, and, and I'm with these guys, and and they're saying, well, there's there's five. If he can get in, the closer he gets to number one. When it came down to the two, everybody's like, holy crap, he may actually win this thing. And I was surrounded by whatever country those dogs were from. There are people around me with flags. I don't have a dog in the race, but I want to throw them off the balcony because I'm so annoyed with it. Now I couldn't be more of a Tom Connor fan. But uh, but I at the end of the day, I mean, number two in that situation on reality shows, on contest shows, has always turned out to be a better position. It's true. Well, to Robert's point, Clay Aiken was the number two. You know, there's a lot of guys that are like that. Run up. You know, I would have liked a million dollars, too. That would have been nice. But, yeah, but it's you, NBC a million dollars, so you wouldn't have gotten a million dollars until you were 94. Yeah, hey that's, now. that's like winning a car on The Price is Right. You have to pay the taxes. Yeah. You know it's, what I mean? So, so these poor old ladies are in debt when they leave. They have to sell the car. So it's You good. were right earlier. You said you don't do it for the money. I mean, you don't do it for the money. You do it for the exposure. That's what you, know, yeah. you do it for. And I got very lucky that year, and I know exactly what happened, and I'm not, I don't have any... You know, well, the great things I get very lucky. The so. greatest thing for a comic, though, is that we can go out and we can make our money on the road. Mm. That's where. So it's like, great, expose me. And then I'm just going to go and I'm going to work every day at theaters and make all this money on the road. You know, you know, a lot of people can't do that. But know? I'm just playing catch up. You know, yeah. I have a woefully underfunded retirement fund and I have three <laughs> tuitions on the horizon. Right. So all I'm doing now is trying to catch up to my peers, you know, everybody else who has the white picket fence and the Beamer and the driveway and everything else. So I got to, you know, and Carrie and I are both out there swinging away like we all do. Is uh, she going on the road with you? Are the kids going on the road with you? She just did for two weeks, which is rare because we don't trust our kids with anybody. We have to, it has to be an in-law and uh, which Bobby is just, 
watch him. Yeah. You, you gotta, no, yeah. I don't. I agree with you. I don't trust my kid with anybody either. We <laughs> so hired a babysitter, and I, I left the monitor on. I listened. The worst thing you could ever do. <laughs> Why, they really? gonna, they gonna... I heard she was good for like five minutes, and then just went silent. I'm like, is he breathing? Like, good, good, Max, good, Aww. Max, and then nothing. I'm like. Good, get home. I called my wife. Go home. They haven't talked. <laughs> they, haven't, they haven't said a thing in 10 minutes. So you have a nanny cam. You have a little nanny cam I have thing. it, but I don't tell them. Should I tell them? Well, now everyone knows. Dude. Well, it's not everybody it. knows. Okay. <laughs> not the, Is it the teddy bear with the creepy well, plus, eyeball? She was gorgeous, too. She was this. She had, you know, creepy she was cam is what it is. well endowed. You weren't filming her for Max. You were filming her for you, <laughs> you liar. No. Uh, Tom Connor is here with us. He's going to be at the Newton Theater in Newton, New Jersey this Saturday. When we come back from break, Tom, we, we've been in this somewhat of an argument as a comedian, as a fan of comedy, and as a girl whose point of reference in comedy is Bill Cosby. Ellen and uh, right, Ellen, I'm she sorry. Two, she, doesn't, she knows two comics. And comments. Jerry. Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and Steve Martin. Say, say before we come back from break, you know, we'll find out who Tom's uh, uh, top comedians will be, and, and we'll finalize Present, the Present bracket. company excluded. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on audience, only on DirecTV.